Hi folks, this is Jay. I hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. And uh, we're looking at expository preaching. Uh, we're looking at this book. And um, we're looking at the history of expository preaching today. James Fit Stitz. Stitz Singer says the history of expository preaching begins with an understanding of the relevatory and explanatory preaching recorded in scripture. Legitimate preaching in the church age continues the expository preaching begun in the Bible. History unveils a limited but rich ongoing legacy of biblical expositors up to the present day. These men who poured their lives in expanding God's word command careful attention. So, he writes, the biblical period, those originally charged with the task of proclaiming God's word revealed God's men as they spoke, God to man as they spoke. This word from God came through different instruments, including the prophets who spoke a divine word from the Lord, the priests who spoke the law and the age who offered wise counsel, sage who offered wise counsel, Jeremiah 18.18. Perhaps the greatest example of Old Testament preaching are found among the prophets. An examination of their message reveals both revelation and explanation. Broadest points to the fact that it is relevance for today's preachers. Alas, says Broadus, the great majority of the Christian world so early lost sight of the fact that many are still so slow, even among Protestants, to receive it clearly. The New Testament minister is not a priest, a cleric, except insofar as a Christian Christians are priesthood. He is a teacher in God's name, even as the Old Testament prophet was a teacher, with the peculiar advantage of being inspired. You also know that it was by no means the main business of the prophets to predict the future, but that they spoke of the past and the present often much more than that of the future. The preaching of the apostles and other early church leaders contributes significantly to the history of expository preaching. The message of Peter, Acts chapter 2, 14, 36, Stephen, Acts chapter 7, verse 2, 53, Paul in Acts 17, 16, 31, and James in Acts 15, 14, 21, have elements both of relevatory and explanatory preaching. The examples are, for the most part, written expositions divine, designed to teach uh, the various lessons as Barclay points out Paul's letters are sermons far more than they are theological treatises it is with immediate situation that they deal they are sermons even in the sense that they were written rather they were spoken rather than written they were not carefully written out by someone sitting at a desk they were poured out by someone stride, striding up and down the room as he dictated seeing all the time in the mind's eye the people to whom they were to be sent the torrential style, the contract of thought, cataract of thought, and the involved sentences all bear the mark of the spoken rather than the written word. So we'll finish it there, some biblical references and thoughts about the history of preaching, and we're going to look at the history of preaching through uh, the early church history. Um, okay.